Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me warping towards a star, but not our star, just the, the this star called Oblock or something, which looks annoyingly like oh that is oh good good I thought it was a star that looked exactly like uh, our star, but it's blue. Yes, um, today I'm looking at this mod called Kerbal Galaxy 2, suggested to me in a comment of some video, and I looked at it and I was like oh my god this is awesome because if you remember um, a while ago I did a video that. Uh, looked at this other interstellar mod because this is an interstellar mod that adds a galaxy which hopefully you'll have guessed from the title and the warping and the mention of more than one star um, but the last one I did pretty much just put two stars in and then you had to kind of maybe add some more and it was really unstable and this is probably equally unstable I haven't really checked but this has just a shit ton of stars we've got um, Kerbal over here we've got Osiris Ab Abaddon um, Oblock for which we're heading towards Nim Polaris and Eravate, and out here we have Gargantua. Yes, Gargantua is freaking awesome. While we warp towards the star, I might as well just look through all these, um, all these extra stars and planets and things. Gargantua, if you have seen the film Interstellar, you will know it was a black hole, which looks really weird, which confused me when I didn't really look at the name. I was like, this doesn't look a lot like a star, and that's because it's not. This is a black hole with lots of starry, <laughs> lots of light and shit around it. Um, and as we zoom out from Gargantua, we have two planets. We have Miller's planet, uh, which is the ocean planet with the bigger seas and the things where spoilers happen. Uh, <laughs> it's basically an ocean planet with lots of tidal activity, which probably right here is just not very much. Um, and out over here, we have a slightly more interesting looking planet. This is man's planet. Yes, Matt Damon's planet when they saved him from space that other time. No, not the one you're thinking of. But yeah, this is all rocky and I think it has a horrifying atmosphere. Let's see if it does indeed have an atmosphere. No plan no information, uh, but we have this and it does have an atmosphere. And its gravity is kind of like Earth. Well, a little um, a little heavier, a little, little bigger. Or I guess Kerbin because this is... Yeah, the, the, one of the big reasons I like this mod is all the little Easter eggs like that. Um, with the whole man's planet and things, and there's Hoth here somewhere. I think we're still warping um, in Explorer 1, piloted by the uh, wonderful Valentina Kerman. I'm using the Interstellar mod with this, and um, that's, yeah, that's the mod that gives me the warp drive and things. I will link all of that in the description. Um, as a quick disclaimer, um, apparently to get this mod to work, you have to take away active, not active texture, you have to take away uh, texture replacer and the environmental visual enhancements, you know the one with the clouds? I actually haven't checked if it works with them, but right now I'm running an OpenGL at, I'm not exactly sure how much RAM, and I don't really want to click out of the window because Bandicam doesn't like it when I do that. Um, but yeah, very not too bad actually if you run an OpenGL, um, even though it has all of these stars. Uh, the textures are a little low res, but I think that might be as I've taken away. Texture replacer, not entirely sure, feel free to play around with it. Very easy install, just literally get a zip, put it in the thing. Anyway, let's look through the rest of the things. In the center we have the sun, mysteriously, because obviously they've just shuggled around the uh, mechanics of the game. Anyway, Aravate, which I think I remember, I think this was in the other mod. Um, nice, big, well, I guess, uh, no, it would be big, because it's like a red dwarf, I think. Um, a relatively large red dwarf. Yes, yeah, coming to the end of its life, most likely. Um, expanded and held together by I want to say electron degeneracy pressure. Oh no. Shit, everything's held together by electron. Um, I'm no uh, no physicist. Um, and yeah, very, very, very interesting. And let's just uh, look at Sahara. Um, maybe it's deserty. Oh, look how cool these look. There's a lot of very cool things. Uh, very cool planets. What does this say about this? Very hot planet named after the Kerbal God of the Sun. Its yellow soil contrasts with its green atmosphere. Oh, that would be pretty. Um, yeah, I do suggest Interstellar, uh, the Interstellar stuff for this because it gives you warp drives and high efficiency engines. But for a little while, I did a very, very short um, series which died quite quickly. On the other one, I was able to do a lot of things with stock KSP because if you understand all the orbital mechanics around the sun and things, it's not that much different with stars. Eden could be a good place to go, I wonder. Um, doesn't look that Eden-y. Eden is a green, dry planet without oxygen in its atmosphere, but when scientists tried to find life on it, they discovered unicellular life under the ice caps of the planet. Interesting, almost kind of like um, Callisto, I believe, um, where they're, they're planning on doing Cal uh, Callisto skimmer mission, NASA, or the, uh, one of um, Thingy's moons, Jupiter's moons, I believe there's either... 
either there or Europa or something there's life, but possibly life under the ice. Could be interesting. But anyway, let's move on. I want to get through this sharpish um, because it's kind of bore. It could be boring. It's not boring because it's interesting and it's me talking, of course. Polaris. Let's take a look at Polaris. Um, this is the star of YouTube networks. No, a hot, bright star nearing the end of its life. Rumors about. Uh, about that it was once very much like Kerbal before it flared up and began to die. Yes, of course, it's probably about to become a red dwarf. Um, red dwarf, am I thinking? Red giant. <laughs> I get red dwarf and red giant confused because red giant's a, uh, a TV show. But I guess maybe it's about to do that or maybe become something much bigger. But if it was like Kerbal, surely... Oh, I don't really know that much about Kerbal, except that it's pretty much the sun, so... Anyway, Pandora. Cool-looking place. Um, is this, is Pandora some sort of, oh, wouldn't that be the Avatar planet? Um, a very hostile planet with acidic seas and atmospheres consisted of nitrogen and thick atmosphere uh, of, and the, th the thick atmosphere of Pandora hides most of its ground. Very interesting, actually. It looks kind of cool. Probably doesn't have, um, unobtainium on it. Fucking unobtainium. You can't call a MacGuffin a MacGuffin. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Very few people will probably, under if you know what a MacGuffin is, it's uh, a thing in a film that is used to, it, it's uh, something you need to find, but is not really existent, and that's called a MacGuffin, but you can't call it a MacGuffin because that's the term for it, and unobtainium was basically the chemical MacGuffin, because it, you you would call it unobtainium, but you'd f figure out a new name for it, like, um, uh, freaking, uh, I don't know that uh, new that new chemical that Iron Man uses in his suit, you, but you can't call it unobtainium. <laughs> anyway, Pandora, very very full of blue people, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> this is a weird video, and we've got Ryla, which appears to have a moon. I haven't seen a moon yet, I don't think, or maybe I haven't been looking. Ooh, gas giant, nice. Looks kind of almost kind of like Jupiter with rings. It doesn't really look like Saturn, does it? Very interesting. Oh, and it's got a little a uh, little bit of <gasps> Hoth. Oh my god! Oh my god! Hoth. <laughs> I wonder if there's an Easter egg on here, a little base, or maybe some atats. Um, atats, not eighty eighties. At atats. <laughs> Looks very really cool. Small moon of Ryla. Hoth can provide one of the most beautiful views in the whole galaxy. Yeah, I imagine. Oh yeah, it's right under the rings. That would be nice to land on. Um, maybe I will. Maybe I'll forget about this more than a couple of days. Maybe I'll do more with it. I don't know. They tend to be quite unstable. And Sight. I don't know if that's... Or Kite. I don't know if that's a Star Wars reference there. Sight is a young rocky planet with a diameter around the size of Eve. It is heavily cratered... It's a heavy cratered, cratered world with many impact sites over 100 kilometers in distance... Diameter? In distance. Um, smaller impact sites were probably much more numerous in the past, but they have since eroded away. Water covers roughly a quarter of the surface, with most of its most of it located in craters, thereby retaining the majority of sites habitation near them. Life is quite abundant on site, only the vast expanses of the desert seem void of fauna. Life in the galaxy. Cray cray. I wonder if you get down there and there'll be loads of little, like, um, PNG models of, like, zebras and shit. Looks really awesome, actually, all these little impact sites and these big-ass craters and ice caps. Would ve I, This is probably one of those places you see and you're like, I really want to go there, but it's a moon, isn't it? Yeah. A moon of a planet. Incredible. Uh... I wonder if it has an oxygen atmosphere. Hard to say. Maybe I'll uh, send down a probe, figure it out. Okay, let's move on. I think that's everything there. And now we've got Nim. Oh, have I already looked at Nim? I don't think so. Ooh. Yeah, I thought. Oh no. Okay, what is this? Uh, some sort of a brown dwarf that sometimes passes very close to Oblog. Yeah, it does. If you look at the orbital mechanics. Um, no planets, but a brown dwarf. I forget what they are. I may, are they smaller versions of? Um, red giant, kind of like a small star will become. I'm not sure. And then we've got Abaddon. Oh no, we've got the uh, planet we're going to, Oblock. Uh, I don't know if I've. Oh yeah, the blue star. I think this is in the other one. And we've got Alien. Alien. Wow, good job. A uh, little gas giant, a large. Oh, a oh, large gas giant. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, that <laughs> that very similar to Bra to small brand dwarf. Oh, it's kind of like something that. Okay, so I was right. Kind of a smaller star sort of thing. Um, but I guess not equivalent to a red giant. Kind of like Jupiter may have almost become. Um, anyway, moving on. Very pretty. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on each planet. Uh, I'll maybe do some fun warping around uh, in a little bit. Phoenix! What is Phoenix all about? Ooh, lava planet. 
Uh, the main feature of this scorched world is the large lakes of molten rock. Phoenix is a world dominated by volcanic and tectonic activity. Volcano volcanoes regularly dot the surface and erupt constantly. I wonder if they like superheat. I wonder if they model the heat because that'd be cool if you landed in there and everything just explodes. I wonder if it has an atmosphere. Uh, no, lame. It would be cool to have a superheated atmosphere. Very hard to escape from. And next, we've got sunflower. Oh, sunflower. It doesn't really look... What kind of sunflower is this? Sunflower is a very close neighbor to the uh, planet Phoenix. Due to gravitational stress from its surface of the strange world, tends to crack and split. Interesting. Moving on! Okay, that is not the quickest way to do this. I know you can just use these keys, but I want to know where I'm going to. Oh, you can't even use the uh, angular back bracket keys. <laughs> Whoever said that one time on one of my videos. <laughs> anyway, zoom out. What have we got here? We've got... Something... Abaton. <laughs> uh, looks kind of like ours, actually. A yellow white star. A small yellow white star. Abaddon is relatively similar to Kerbal. It does look pretty much the same. And a planet called Violetta. I wonder what color Violetta is. Um, ooh, Violet. Interesting. <laughs> when scientists had... When scientists has discovered this planet. Ah, indeed. A grammar to the win. Um, they thought that it was more... That it was more of anal more one analog of Planet E. Okay, uh, it's quite hard to read words that aren't quite right, which they find near other stars every day. But later spectral analysis and analyzing it has shown that one of this, that on this this planet there is oxygen. No, um, I think there's a the that could be taken out there. Um, and the purple color is likely to cause single-celled purple algae floating in the atmosphere of this planet. Interesting. Very cratered, very... actually does look really nice. One of the few... one of the ones that looks nicer than most of the others. Uh, <laughs> that uh, info is not super... Uh, super helpful. It's uh, not written brilliantly. Uh, what do we got next? We have Nyx, and it appears to have a moon. Uh, Nyx is... Uh, this dry planet has no signs of life, but its atmosphere contains oxygen. This is that is really strange. Not really. You need more than oxygen for life. Um, but it does appear to have a moon. Oh, a really big moon called Icy, which just looks kind of like a smaller, slightly less colorful version of Nyx. <laughs> yeah. Well, though you do get really big moons, like Pluto's moon Charon, I believe, is uh, very big compared, like half the size of. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't looked at the most recent data. Um, and we've got. Uh, Aphrodite is Valentina's favorite planet because she uh, she very she, because she very like pink color. Okay, cool. I'm I'm assuming English was maybe not this people's first language, um, but still uh, probably better than my Spanish. And um, well, Valentina's actually in the spaceship, so good good. She, she, that's why she's coming here. Obviously, obviously, I didn't just do it randomly. Um, oh no, she's not coming here. Fuck her. And then we've just got Kerbal, and oh, and we've got Osiris. Uh, what was it? Osiris is a neutron star. Ah, oh, cool. I like how they've done kind of a spectrum of them. They've got a neutron star, a black hole, a freaking red dwarf, a red giant. I don't know why I get this confused. Osiris is a neutron star. Neutron stars are the densest and smallest stars known to exist in the universe. With a radius of only about 30 kilometers, they can have a mass about two times that of Kerbal. Yes, well, well I guess two times that of the sun in our, uh, in our universe where things are much bigger. Um, and it appears to have a little planet, which is probably doesn't have a great view of uh, this tiny little star, although it glows pretty brightly. And no information on Ida, just looks pretty pretty bland. Anyway, that is everything, I believe, because the only star left is our star, and we know our star quite well. So let's just warp to this planet. Um, I Well, I'm actually currently warping, but I'm going to time warp as well, um, because I've got the shitty small warp drive, and I can only go at, like, a tiny bit of C, I think. What, what am I traveling at? Um, nope. Not even 0.1 C. Terrible. This is something I threw together. Um, the nice thing about this mod is it does work much better with other mods like Interstellar. The old one didn't work particularly well with them. Anyway, here we are. Ooh, just encountered that one. Oh well, who cares? I'm warping. It doesn't affect me. Uh, but yeah, it still takes about 60 days to get places like, well, cl to close by stars, but uh, still not bad. Anyway, I'm just going to warp to periaps and see if I can use my engine. Not really sure whether or not it works. I don't think it has enough power. I didn't really build this very well. But yeah, that is uh, pretty much all the stuff in the mod. Very interesting. Um, it is quite fun, just kind of... It adds obviously a lot of stuff, and uh, if you're... I would suggest running an OpenGL. Um, 
I guess texture replacer would make it very, very. It would probably make it more uh, uh, like um, RAM heavy. But uh, I, I took it out because someone told me to, so that it will work. And uh, uh, environmental visual enhancements. Um, that's probably why some of the uh, atmosphere descriptions didn't quite match up to like what they said because I don't have that installed because you know RAM issues and things. And apparently it ruins the atmosphere of a lot of things. Insufficient electricity. Well, that is annoying. Um, I still vent heat though. I have tons of electricity. Oh, it wants megajoules. Oh, different thing. Um, maybe if I warp slightly closer to the star, I can be going slow enough such that if I just kind of do this. Okay. <laughs> the the layman's guide to warp technology. Uh, no, don't don't. Oh God, it's automatically doing that annoying thing. Um, Activate warp drive. Insufficient charge. Oh, god damn. Okay, we'll just warp for it. Um, I think it's going to leave the star before it's fully charged. Because I used all my energy, I think, on the engine. Oh no, here we go. It's almost charged. Good. Yeah. Uh, this, yeah, I have to say, this is much nicer than the other one. Much easier to find as well. Kerbal Galaxy 2. Uh, always a fun thing to do. Uh, just, like, play with some really just crazy outlandish mods that really changed the game because it's just it's just interesting and it's nice having things like Hoth and uh, Miller's Planet and things. Um, I'm just going to get closer to the star of course. Get myself, uh, maybe I can get myself into orbit just by using the warp drive to move myself closer to the star. Uh, okay, alright. Okay, oh look how beautiful and glitchy. <laughs> Deactivate warp drive. Ooh, slightly better. Maybe if I just get a little closer. Yeah, as I said though, I mean, sometimes it's a bit of a fun challenge to try doing it without things like Interstellar. I've achieved Interstellar travel without the Interstellar mod, um, which is all this kind of stuff, this crazy technology. Um, oh god, I've got to start charging. God damn warp drive. I haven't even clicked start charge. I'm so stupid. <laughs> I'm the worst at Interstellar travel. Now you know my <laughs> the thing I hate about myself. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? I would be better at interstellar travel. Um, all right, let's get a little closer to the to the to the. Oop, shit. Okay, I think this might actually get me into orbit because obviously, if I'm going, if I'm lower down to the star, I'll be going. Uh, it'll be it'll have a higher orbital velocity. The problem is with the warp drive is when you stop warping, or at least with an Alcubi air warp drive. I'm not really sure about the mechanics of other ones, um, but when you Stop warping. Uh, you keep your uh, you keep you keep your velocity that you had before. So you know, you like rate your relative velocity. Velocity. And there we are, about to fall into the star. I really shat the bed on this one. Uh, <laughs> so Valentina is doomed to die in a blue star, which is a shame because apparently she likes purple. But yeah, I, 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 you should really check out this mod. The link will be in the description, and a link to Kerbal Interstellar Extended, which is what this is called. It is, um, it's not the original Interstellar. It's all the same stuff, but it's just being worked on by a different developer because the other guy had to stop for whatever reason. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you like that look of this stuff, and if you like these sort of videos, which I imagine quite a few people do, I guess just looking at mods. I don't really do that that much anymore. But if you do like that, just tell me. Or if you would like, I'm probably gonna do a few videos on this, but. When I tried that sort of thing before with the old the old mod with the um like two stars, it was just so unstable. And Beardy Penguin will tell you that too. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll keep trying it out, and you should try it out. Link in the description. I've said that about a thousand times. I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Caspi with Tape. I will see you next time.